Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, you know, in our last episode, if you recall, we discussed the moral issue of self-defense and we concluded that uh, should you happen to witness a violent crime being committed, whether you're the intended victim or somebody else is, uh, you really have a moral obligation to seek the prevention of that crime. And by delegation of authority, you may, in many cases, have a right to employ deadly force uh, in that prevention if necessary. Now, from a philosophical standpoint, whether or not you happen to have a gun on you really has no significance in terms of your moral and ethical uh, rights or responsibilities. However, uh, a firearm is a tool that could allow you to intervene much more effectively in a dynamic critical incident, you know, should such intervention be required on your part. And so today I thought I would take a minute just to talk about some of the more practical uh, aspects of carrying a firearm. Uh, and certainly this is not a comprehensive treatment of all the uh, holster options out there, because I know there are a lot of them and I don't have experience with all of them. But I wanted to take a minute to show you some of the rigs that I've used uh, and talk about, you know, what they've been good for, you know, where they work, where they don't work so well, you know, so that you can benefit from what I've learned on the subject. So here we have a classic tie-down drop loop holster. Uh, if you remember, this is the holster I made in a previous video, but uh, in my experience, this is by far the most comfortable and convenient way to carry a full-sized handgun like this uh, Smith & Wesson 629-44 Magnum. However, it does have its drawbacks. Uh, for one thing, you know, even though this 44 is a great gun to carry when you're out in grizzly country and this holster option is generally a great way to carry it, if you're out fishing, it may not be the best solution. The reason I say that is because this rig does not work with chest waders. Uh, you know, I've tried it both ways. You, you put the waders on over the gun, and now when you got them on, the gun is completely inaccessible. There's no way to draw it conveniently from your waders. Meanwhile, your rear sight or possibly your hammer are kind of poking a hole in the side of your waders, letting water in. Uh, so wearing them under your waders just doesn't work. And of course, if you're wearing them on the outside, then you step in the water and your gun is in the water, and that's not, you know, that's not good either. So, um, so this rig does not work with waders. If you're going to be fly fishing, you probably need to look at something else. The other drawback to this setup is it's not very discreet. Um, if you're wearing a gun in a holster like this, it's pretty obvious that you're wearing a gun. And here in Idaho, Open carry is technically legal, but it's not necessarily considered socially acceptable. Uh, that's unfortunate. Um, you know, certainly from my perspective, carrying a gun is indicative not of any intent to do evil, but simply of a recognition that evil exists and perhaps a willingness to deal with it when it rears its ugly head. Uh, so accusing a man of the intent to do violence because he wears a firearm is like accusing a man of the intent to cause traffic accidents because he wears a seatbelt. Uh, nevertheless, in many cases, it may not be convenient uh, to wear a gun openly in public. And, and I should probably qualify that by saying, you know, out here in Idaho, if, if you wear a gun openly and you're walking down the street, nine out of ten people that you pass on the street are probably going to recognize that you have every right to do that and be totally okay with that. The problem is that there's still that tenth person, that small minority of liberals who have no idea what the gun laws actually are, and so they simply, when they see a gun, they simply freak out and call the police, and the police, of course, have to respond to cover uh, their own uh, responsibilities just in case it's something real. Um, and so, you know, if you wear a gun openly in public, there's a good chance you will get hassled about it. And so for convenience sake, if we're going to be out in public, we'll probably need something more discreet than this rig. Depending on where we're at, we may just be able to cover it up with a, a long concealment garment, like a duster. See, now that gun is out of sight, you know, I mean, there's still a lump on my hip that's going to be obvious to anyone who knows what to look for, but... Uh, that may or may not be a problem depending on where we're at. These dusters, by the way, 
are great uh, for all weather uh, outdoor activities because you know in in hot weather it acts almost like being inside a tent with a swamp cooler you know your sweat gets the thing wet and then natural circulation of air you know through the relatively loose fitting garment uh, provides a lot of evaporative cooling so it'll actually keep you cooler in hot weather um, and and slow down dehydration which is probably a bigger advantage but uh, in cold weather uh, where you're not sweating so much and the thing stays relatively dry, they actually provide a surprising amount of insulation. Still, that's kind of off on a tangent. So in trying to find a way to overcome the limitations of the standard tie-down rig, uh, the first thing I tried was a shoulder holster. And there's different ways to set up a shoulder holster. There's different uh, styles of shoulder holster rigs out there. Uh, what I prefer is just to take a long belt cross it in the middle, then buckle it, and stick your arms through the loops that are formed by uh, the crossed belt. And that way you can use it with pretty much any gun that you've got a holster for. You, you know, you just stick the belt through the holster like you would any holster, you know, any other belt. Um, and so, you know, as you can see, it, it crosses in the back, um, holds the gun up under your right uh, armpit, or you can switch it around if you're left-handed. And the, if you're wearing a heavy gun like this 44, you want to either have something equally heavy on the left side or else uh, run a little uh, belt from the shoulder holster loop down to your waist belt uh, and that'll hold this loop down so that it doesn't start to uh, cut off circulation to your right arm because of the imbalanced weight when you've got a, a relatively heavy gun in the holster. Now, this option does circumvent the stated limitations of the standard tie-down rig. Um, it's relatively easy to conceal. If I put on a waistcoat, for example, the shoulder holster completely disappears. Uh, the astute observer might still notice a little bit of a lump under my armpit here. Uh, but frankly, if they know what to look for like that, they're probably someone who's carried a gun themselves a fair amount, and so they're probably not going to be too concerned about the fact that you have one. However, the shoulder holster does have its drawbacks, uh, and the biggest drawback is it's very difficult to access quickly. I mean, Drawing a gun from a shoulder holster is just inherently awkward compared to some of the other options that are out there. Additionally, it, it does kind of constrain your upper body motion, you know, with those two loops around your arms. So it's not necessarily the most comfortable way to carry a gun, especially a big heavy gun like this. The shoulder holster uh, setup works a little better with a smaller gun like this Walther uh, P22 I've got here. Especially because the gun is short enough, I, I made the holster so I could wear it horizontally on the belt as well as vertically, uh, and that makes it quite a bit easier to draw uh, from a shoulder holster setup. That said, even for a short gun like this, shoulder holster is probably not the most convenient or the most, most comfortable way to carry a gun. Now the final carry option that I'd like to consider is what's typically known as appendix carry. You know, in this case, the gun rides in a holster that sits down inside my pants with a loop that comes down over the outside through which my belt passes to hold the holster in place. This setup combines many of the advantages of the shoulder holster and the tie-down holster, respectively. Um, you know, like the tie-down holster, it's a relatively comfortable, a relatively convenient way to carry uh, a firearm, even a relatively large firearm like this uh, 44 Magnum here. And yet it's also very easy to conceal. Uh, you can cover it up with a vest, uh, a waistcoat, a duster, even a t-shirt pulled down over your front. Um, anything that's closed in the front will pretty much cover up this gun and, and provide adequate concealment. You know, yes, the astute observer may still notice a little bit of a bulge in, uh, in your front here, but here in America, uh, if, you're, if there's a little bit of a bulge in front, most people are going to assume you're just fat. So that, that's probably not an issue. 
even with a concealment garment on like this, it remains relatively accessible, relatively easy to draw quickly if need be. It also works great with chest waders. Uh, if you're wearing waders, they actually provide great concealment for the firearm. It doesn't really stick out that much. Uh, you know, so you can, and yet you, there's still enough elasticity at the top of most chest waders. You can reach down inside, grab the gun, and, and deploy it probably faster than you can uh, from a shoulder holster under the same circumstances. The one thing that appendix carry doesn't work so well for uh, is horseback riding and bareback riding in particular. Because um, if you if you're riding a horse, and especially at a trot the gun has a tendency to start bouncing up and down in front of you uh, and as it bounces up and down the barrel of the gun has a tendency to crush a certain portion of the male anatomy against the horse's backbone which needless to say is an extremely unpleasant experience. Another minor drawback to this design is that because the gun is so close to your body it, it tends to get uh, exposed to a lot of sweat, especially you know if you're out doing uh, physical activity, you know hiking or something in in the hot weather. Um, that's not necessarily a, a big problem because most guns nowadays are designed to handle uh, a fairly corrosive environment. Um, but you probably would not want to use this with a gun that's uh, built from traditional blued steel. You know you'd want either a stainless firearm or, or you know something built with modern polymers of course are, are not going to corrode either. Uh, but in general this is a very good all-around carry method especially when you need to be discreet. So this has kind of become my default method of carry uh, especially if I need to be discreet about it. Um, of course if I'm if I'm going to be up in the mountains where it doesn't matter I'll go ahead and wear a, a tie-down holster because it's more comfortable um, but even there the difference is marginal. So, I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching The Idahoan Show.